50 and 50, uh, 50 vlogs in 50 days and uh, with the support of Netix, um, we're really getting into a vast range of topics in flocks, uh, dairy and beef. So today I'm going to talk about lameness in sheep and how I would tackle and actually control lameness in sheep. Um, so when, we when I think about lameness or cattle or sheep or anything, I think about you know, why is lameness an issue because uh, it's about the pain and, and I always say pain limits performance and we must limit pain in our production systems uh, from a welfare perspective but from a performance perspective as well. I couldn't get the word perspective out of my mouth but I remember going to a sheep meeting to talk about lameness one time and I had a little bag of stones and I said to the farmers, I got some strange looks but anyone who knows me will know that I'm, I'm, I'm well capable of dealing with that. If I put a stone in each of your shoes and asked you to walk around for the day, think of the pain that that would cause. We must associate pain in our animals in the same way uh, and the effects it can have on, our, on performance and welfare. Um, so we must limit it. And when we think about infectious lameness, we think about lame sheep, really, you know, the pain that's associated with that is, is tremendous. And if that's a yo who's mothering lambs, uh, if you're trying to finish lambs, lame lambs, you know, the, the last thing they'll want to think about is dry matter intake. Uh, you know, it, it really can limit performance. So when I look at lameness in sheep, and I'm going to cover the three main infectious uh, causes. Uh, scald, which is the, the first reddening in between the feet caused by the um, you know, often seen in lambs, it often is associated with the first or the next stage, which is foot rot, which is much more severe. We all know that smell. So scald won't typically smell, but it'll be the reddening in between the cleats. The foot rot is much more infectious, much more chronic inflammation there, and, and is that typical smell by Fusobacterium bacteria when it gets in there. The third one we're seeing a lot more of is COD, contagious ovine digital dermatitis. And that will associate it, will, will, stop at, will start at the top of the coronary band here, but often we see it, the, 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 the shell of the hoof will almost be off, and it's, it quite, causes quite a severe lameness as well. Now there's other causes of lameness, shelly hoof, you know, misshapen feet, and I suppose these ones are in the other category. We typically see this is 90% of the lameness we'll see. Just when you're, when you're pulling out those types of lame sheep in a, in a, in a lameness control program, um, I think the key things to make decisions about are, um, you know, are they, should they be kept in the flock from a breeding decision and a culling decision? Um, and people often talk about peering hooves. And I think uh, since I even started as a vet 18, 90 years ago, the, 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 the idea of peering feet has really gone out of fashion. And rightly so, because... These are contagious, they spread in between the flock and if you think about your foot pairing, that's one real agent that can cause uh, spread. So if you are pairing, you have to pair feet, have an alcohol disinfectant that you dip the shears in in between every foot or every sheep at least uh, because you don't want to spread it and avoid pairing if at all possible. Um, <clears throat> when I look at a lameness control plan, so if you have a lame, lameness issue in the flock, the best time to always do this is a time maybe before housing, before stress, but it can be done at any stage. And why is housing such a risk? If we just think about the environment that the foot is in, uh, first of all, these things are contagious. They spread from yo to yo. Uh, and if, if, if the foot is in a wet, damp condition, like, a, like at housing time, that will lead to more problems. So getting your house right, fresh air, plenty bedding, good drainage, that all helps to reduce the risk of spread. Okay. So when you have a lameness issue, this is what, I, what I'll say to it. You know, you get all the flock in, you've got to get the flock in, and you've established you have a lameness issue, um, and you see lame sheep, you need to examine all lame sheep at a minimum. So handling facilities become really important here, that you can get sheep in, you can handle them easily, and lame sheep need to be pulled out. So anything that's lame needs to be pulled out, anything that's not to be lame. Now you will miss a few at the start, and that's okay, but try and pull out everything. Now the, the idea of tipping over everyone to check feet is, is, is probably too hard to work but at a minimum get all the flock in and you need to pull out as a first step your lame flock and then your healthy flock and then there's two kind of pathways now with your lame flock you've got to turn them over you've got to establish what's the cause of lameness and look it can be cod foot rot or scald but you've got to establish it uh, what is causing the lameness now often when you talk to farmers and you do this there can be a mixture but if it's if it's all foot rot if it's all cod or typically we'll see lambs over the grazing season that it's all scald that will influence your 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 treatment protocols foot rot requires antibiotics um, will foot baiting foot baiting will help scald can often be managed with foot baiting alone and um, whereas cod is really uh, antibiotics are the only treatment of choice and you need to talk to your vet about the most appropriate antibiotics for this now when people when i talk to um, people about lameness and flocks they love when i talk about the treatments for the specific 
agents. And that's not what I'm about. I'm about always pushing the message of prevention because all of this is really important. And we're going to learn more and more about uh, as things unfold. It's the importance of food supply, the importance of sheep and lamb in, in, in the marketplace. What a fantastic product. But there will be more and more influences on one health and the reduction of antibiotics. And if you look at sheep farming, we're quite low users of antibiotics, but one area that can definitely do with improvement is uh, lameness. So I, I don't get into specifics, but cod definitely needs antibiotic treatment. So does foot rod. Skull will work with, with, um, uh, with foot bags. So you've established what it is, then you decide your treatment for your lame, your, your lame flock. Um, uh, with, with both flocks, you need to begin foot baiting straight away for uh, two reasons. You, with your lame flock, it's almost you know as a, as a treatment. With your healthy flock, because you might have missed a few carriers or mightn't be lame, foot batting over a period of time when these two things work together reduces uh, the amount of infectious agents that can spread from your healthy flock causing problems or continue that cycle. So regular foot batting. So I'm going to talk about foot baiting sorry, in, in, in probably the coming weeks because I think it's a really important topic to get it right and how you do it correctly. But one thing here, and this is apologies for my terrible artwork, is batch foot baiting works well in sheep where you get sheep into a pen. And this is back to good investment in facilities if you're going to be working with sheep getting them in and let them spend time soaking in the foot bath solution and then standing time after in a dry yard for half an hour is really, really important as well. Now, it, having the feet going into the foot bath as clean as possible certainly is an option, but at the very least, look at foot baiting, how long the foot of the ore, the lamb is bending in the foot bath is really, really important. And that's why batch foot baiting works quite well. Now this might seem like a lot of work now and it's easier just treat and go and treat and go. But if you can really get on top of these infectious lamas, get them under control, it can make a huge difference to your flock. The only thing I haven't added in here is when you're buying in, uh, quarantine becomes really important. Uh, so that you're tipping over any sheep that have come into the flock to make sure they're not lame foot baiting them at a minimum before they get, go into the rest of the flock. I would say absolutely do not add or do not bring buy in lame sheep into your flock or anything with a lesion on its foot without at least foot baiting it because it just starts all sorts of issues. Okay, so your lame flock, you've seen what it is. Then you have to decide how your treatments are working this lame flock because that's treatment success is really important, especially with these two. If it's scald, I mean, it's just a case of uh, running them through uh, a foot bath. Now you might say down here that if it's just scald that you don't need to run a lame flock with lambs and that's probably a, is, is, is certainly acceptable that you just foot baiting if you know scald is just the issue. But with all these other issues you need to review treatments and it's really important that sheep don't develop an immunity to a lot of these um, bacteria that cause um, lameness and what happens is they can become chronic carriers so if you're finding you're treating an animal or your or, or, or a lamb more than twice you're going to have an issue that animal is going to be a reservoir for infection so culling does become an important part of it so uh, some i've seen it used before where you put a color tag in for the first lameness second lameness and then after that it's it's goodbye because they're a source of infection um, and remember as well i suppose your breeding policies with all these things even you know the, the poor the poor misshapen hooves that you know you're not breeding Breeding from those uh, replacements from those animals because there's genetics will help definitely. Um, some, some some sheep are more resistant or, or will have better food, foot um, anatomy than others. So that's an important thing to consider. So you're managing your lame flock. You're deciding what it is. You're deciding your treatments. You've got to review them over time, and they might mean regular treatments. But this lame flock, hopefully it's small, uh, requires a bit of management in the short term. And you'll return them after about three weeks to, to the main flock once, uh, three to four weeks we'll say, once they're under control. And I know this seems like a bit of work, but it does work when it's applied in flocks. Your healthy flock, pretty much very little to do with them. You're still going to get the main, uh, while you're uh, aggressively going after this lameness, uh, probably on a weekly basis to pull out any of this lame and join the lame flock maybe. But at a very minimum, the healthy flock is going to be foot, bat, foot baited weekly until the return of these two flocks together. Then, I suppose, when you have your lame flock coming back, you need a long-term plan. And certainly for foot rot, I find vaccination works extremely well. Um, uh, bat foot baiting should continue because it's always reducing down the amount of infection pressure that's there. Again, with your lameness plan, you are you know bad feet or any repeating culling and making good breeding decisions out of yours that are not susceptible to lameness. That helps. So that's my um, and I did mention quarantine. So that's my approach to lameness. Now it might seem like 
a lot of work to begin with. But if this is applied in the correct manner and you aggressively step back and approach lameness instead of what's the best treatment, how do I prevent it, take the steps there along, minimize your risks at housing, the use of vaccination, particularly with foot rot and even cod it helps, you can really have a sound, healthy flock. You're limiting pain, you're limiting lameness, and you're going to get better performance. In each of these okay. videos, I do a thought for the day. I remember I started this, I said I came up with the idea, and this wasn't my first time doing something like this. I did an online course where I had a, a calf health course, and I had a thought for, the, thought for the day in each of the lectures as well. But anyway, I suppose the reason for thought for the day is to try to create some bit of positive, um, uh, I suppose, sentiment, ideas, and something a little bit different to add a small bit of value. Why would a vet do it? That's what I like to do. Uh, and I suppose my message today is, look, I'm comfortable in, in the things I like to do. I'm not afraid to be a little bit different. So to anybody, uh, I think this is a good message. Be unique, be yourself. There's too many people that follow the, the herd, follow the flock, um, but sometimes it's good to be yourself and know who that is. That's my message for today. Happy safe farming.